What up, Daniel? Literally right when it starts. All right, what up, what up? Daniel, nice to see you. For everyone getting here early, make sure to go to the upper right-hand corner, hit the three dots and drop a like on the stream. It will help everyone get notified as fast as possible that the stream has started. And also, if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the chat. This is the perfect time to do it because there's not that many people here, so I can actually read the chat fully. What up, Steve? Nice to see you. Just waiting for everyone to roll in right now. Matt, nice to see you. Austin, Cameron. Messi, what up, Messi? Messi, I finally found you on X-Man. I finally dropped you the follow. What up, Strong Mountain? Nice to see you. Looks like everyone's just starting to roll in. XRP, Poncello, Liam, Jeremy, Halls Balls, Nick, John. What up, everyone? Guys, make sure if you're getting here early, you do take a quick second, go to the upper right-hand corner, three dots, and drop a like in the stream. It's going to get as many here people here as possible. Defin, what up, what up? Yo, Daniel, just comment on like the most recent thing I posted. Just comment on like the most recent thing I posted. That's the easiest way to do it. And whenever I recognize anyone from the stream, I always drop them a follow, so... Dark Deception, what up? Yeah, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. Guys, any questions, make sure to drop them. Yeah, Messi, XRP did have a small pump going on. Take a look at the price right now. It's kind of just hanging out where it was. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of excitement over the next couple of days in terms of the AMM. And there's been a lot of argument whether or not the AMM will increase the price of XRP. I want to talk about that in this video, so we'll make sure to really address that. Um, yeah, a little jog for XRP today, getting the legs warm. Um, excited about Flair. I'm so excited about Flair. Flair, FXRP is one of the things I'm most excited about. Uh, are you expecting a final correction dump in the next couple weeks in the biggest bull market? Um, I, look, I, I don't know about the dump, right? I don't know about the correction. Um, I think some coins like could correct, but at this point, a correction might also funnel profits into other cryptocurrencies. Um, I, I think we're already in the midst kind of of the early stages of the bull market. Um, so it, it's certainly possible that we see that correction, but I wouldn't bet on it. I'm just dollar cost averaging like I have been, right? My plan hasn't changed. I'm not trying to time anything up. I know the assets I want to hold, and I know those assets are going to be the top performer, top performers in this next bull market. So I'm just waiting for those assets to appreciate and dollar cost averaging into them as we kind of move the way we do. So I don't know about one last correction, right? I think a lot of people are going to try to predict that. I think a lot of people will ultimately uh, not be able to predict the correction, right? Or not be able to correct uh, correctly predict the bottom. Um, but I, I don't focus too much on those short-term uh, short movements. Um, VCs dumping money into Solana to pull... Look, I, I, I think at the end of the day... Salon is just going through a bubble retail frenzy in the same way we saw 
in GameStop and GME. Um, if you take a look at the projects in the top 20 on Solana, none of them are real, right? They're just fake projects. They're all scams. They're all they're all rug pulls, right? So it's, it's just a bit of a frenzy right now. Um, there's certainly props to anyone who's been able to profit on that frenzy. Uh, it's, it's just not something I'm, I'm a big fan of, right? Yeah, DCA has been pretty easy the last two weeks. Uh, if you jacked a real... I wouldn't... Look, I don't want to take shots at anyone, but I wouldn't uh, take anything Jack the Rippler says too seriously. Um, he's been wrong a lot more often than he's been right, so... When am I coming to Dubai? Uh, well, if I, if I could afford it, I'd love to be there, but... Uh, hopefully at some point I'll make a trip to Dubai. I've always wanted to go there. I don't think I'll be staying there though. I don't think I'll be staying there. Uh, Chadwick, nice to see you. Uh, yeah, Jack is a hype man. Hype men are good, right? Hype men are good, but not when you're like hyping based off not real information. Like if you're hyping real information, that's good. If you're hyping fake information, like that's not good. So I don't know. Look, everyone's got their own incentive. William Whitmore, nice to see you. And Jay, thank you so much for the $5. Uh, hey, Mick, were you disappointed to see that BlackRock chose ETH for tokenization? Why not XRP? Look, Bl BlackRock put $100 million in that ETH tokenization fund. Look, that's absolutely nothing for BlackRock. Um, I'm fully convinced that BlackRock and the XRP ledger are going to have Big things coming in the future. I wouldn't worry too much about a small amount of money going into Ethereum. Look, what we know is whether we like it or not, a lot of the big institutions out there perceived the clarity that the SEC gave Ethereum back in 2018 as clarity for the entire chain. So a lot of these institutions have wanted to experiment with Ethereum on their cryptocurrency initiatives just because they assume that when the SEC said it wasn't a security, they weren't gonna change their mind later down the road. So I think it's just a starting point, right? I think BlackRock and a lot of these institutions are gonna throw some money at Ethereum just to test things out, test the water, see how things go. But ultimately, I just don't see it being sustainable at all. Here's, here's the biggest problem with Ethereum, right? You can buy influence over the network. If BlackRock really starts accumulating Ethereum, they're gonna literally own the network. And another institution can accumulate interest on the network because it's proof of stake. The, the consensus mechanism for Ethereum just doesn't bode well with large institutions accumulating the asset. I think overall, Ethereum has a lot of problems in terms of its technical capabilities. Um, I think it's a great place for experimentation. I think it's a great place for testing new things, but I just don't think it's production ready. The stark contrast we've seen Ripple take in terms of the XRP ledger versus Ethereum is the XRP ledger, right, is not pr programmable like Ethereum. Ethereum, you can spin up a new smart contract every single day that does something new. On Ethereum, it's fully customizable and you can make anything in that given moment but Ripple's taken the approach that that's not what the institutions want. Ripple's taken the approach that you can just build core functionality into the ledger that every institution can use, and therefore every institution is playing by the same rule. On Ethereum, everyone's playing by different rules. New smart contracts could be made out of nowhere that can drain people's wallets, that can deposit scam tokens in people's wallets, right? Anything kind of goes. And it just people it's up to the institutions what they want do they want a production ready blockchain where everything's set in stone and everyone's playing by the same rules or do they want kind of more of a sandbox experimental place where they can build things on the fly me personally i'm pretty convinced the institutions are going to build on ethereum to experiment they're going to build new custom applications there but ultimately when it comes to really moving value when it comes to core functionality it's going to be on the xrp ledger Look, Ripple's been working with these institutions for a very long time. They understand what the institutions want. Ripple made a decisive choice not to bring hooks to the XRP ledger, likely because they knew institutions weren't going to want that level of programmability. Institutions like the ability to know that everyone's playing by the same rules and no one's going to make something tomorrow that could change the system that they're putting value on. That's the best part about the XRP ledger. Nothing changes until an amendment goes through and then everyone knows the new rules of the ledger. On Ethereum, the rules are constantly changing. So just something to keep in mind. Also, guys, we have 376 people in here already. Only 83 likes. So uh, drop a like for Murdoch just getting here. 
Guys, remember to drop a like on the stream. You have to go to the upper right-hand corner. There should be a little drop down. That will allow you to like the stream and allow more people to see the stream, get more people in here, and really just help educate people on what's coming to the XRP ledger. Let's see if we can get to 100. Oh, just like that, we're gonna smash past 100. Guys, thank you to everyone who just did that real quick. Really, really appreciate you doing that. Um, I wish it was something like, hey, you just sit on the stream for five minutes and there's an automatic like on the stream so you guys didn't have to go through the extra effort of actually doing it. But for whatever reason, it's good for the YouTube algorithm, so I do appreciate people who take the time to do it. Let's see what else we got. What are my thoughts on the Evernode token? <coughs> I don't have a good way to buy it, but I'm a big fan of what Evernode's doing. Um, I would like to accumulate some of the Evernode token. Um... Hey, Mikkel. John, hey, my wife has been buying a lot of XCN. Should I slow her down? Thoughts, please. Uh, normally, I don't take a look at random tokens, but John, you're a member, so I'll make sure to do that for you. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to provide a, um, a really good analysis of it right now, um, but I'll, I will take a quick look. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, John, my very quick, um, my very quick analysis on is that it, uh, I mean, it looks like they're at least trying to be a legitimate project. I mean, it looks like they have at least something going on. It's a decentralized lending protocol for peer to peer uh, market lending. Um, look, I, it's, it's not my cup of tea and something I would invest in just because it's an ERC 20. It's an application layer thing. Um, I think a lot of this stuff is going to end up being very commoditized and is likely going to be done by centralized companies handling the lending who are going to do that on top of the protocols themselves rather than these things being done on a protocol layer. But it doesn't look like it's necessarily terrible. It just wouldn't be my first thing to prove, uh, pick. So, um, yeah, I hope that helps. Look, look, if things pump all the time that I think are crappy projects. Um, I would say typically I've been pretty on the money in terms of, uh, long-term, whether these crappy projects hold gains, typically they don't, but there's nothing to say that it can't still be a good project over the long term and can still make gains. So, uh, Ian, nice to see you. Did you not? Oh, I, Ian, I did collect my Evernote airdrop. I just mean more Evernote. Um, I would like to build up a little bit more of a position, but Ian, nice to see you on the stream. Always love having you here. Um, yeah, I did collect my Evernote airdrop. Um, I would like more though. It's, it's a really cool project. Um, it's a shame. I wish I could explain it better. It, it's just really hard. Hey Mick, can you include subtitles on your videos moving forward? Um, Murdoch, I think YouTube lets you just add subtitles to it. I'll see if I have to turn that feature on or not, but I think YouTube allows you to add subtitles to the videos, but I could be wrong there. Let me double check on that. But um, if there's something I need to do to make that an option, I will make sure to do that. Um, honestly, I probably won't do permanent subtitles on the videos just because um, it's probably going to piss off a lot of people too having the subtitles, but if there is a way I can make it so you can abs, oh, YouTube subtitles are lame. Okay. Um, I'll look into it, Murdoch. I'll look into it. Um, 432 people, only 154 likes. Guys, let's get this to 200 likes real quick. Let's get this at 200 likes. Also, appreciate all the questions. You guys are blowing it out of the water. I'm trying to get to as many as possible, but there's a lot of very good ones. Um, Raymundo, I saw you saw your comment on my opinion towards X pumps. Look, they'll figure it out. Overall, I don't think uh, I don't think they made the right move. Look, um, there's nothing special about an X punk NFT. Um, I was joking around earlier today, right? Uh, there's already Solana punks on the Solana chain. It's all it's all the same punk, right? It's just copied over and over and over again. Uh, my personal opinion is what makes an NFT special is the community you build the NFT for. So if you're building an NFT project for the XRP ledger, right? 
then you're b building a community of people who like the XRP ledger and also want to be part of your NFT collection. Getting up and moving to my eye, in my eyes is not a good idea. It's just kind of giving an F you to the community you originally built on. But look, I don't run the NFT project. Uh, they do. They thought it was their best decision. So I guess we'll just see how it goes. But I did think it was pretty funny. They're moving XRP punks to the Solana chain, but there was already Solana punks on the Solana chain. So now there's Solana punks and then there's XRP punks on Solana. It's, it's, it's a little silly to me, but you know, at the end of the day, I don't really think it matters, guys. Do I think um, punks being built on a chain means anything? Probably not. Um, do I think digital art on blockchain is going to be the biggest thing in our future financial system? Definitely not. Do I think it's cool? Yeah, I think it's kind of cool. Um, do I think it's critical to the future? Absolutely not. So look, I just think there's much bigger things being built than um, pictures of pixelated punks that are copied from one chain to another. Uh, but we'll see, right? We'll see. Look, if, if the most blockchain ever turns into is being able to issue a pixelated pump, punk, uh, that's tough. Raymundo, thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Really, really appreciate it, Raymundo. I always see you commenting to my stuff on X. Uh, you're absolutely amazing. You've been around for a while. Uh, I really appreciate that, Raymundo. You're, you're absolutely awesome. Um... Yeah, no, Daniel's awesome. I always love how positive Daniel is. Him, Raimundo, Messi. You guys are all gems to have on the stream. William Whitmore. I liken NFTs to the flashing attribute of Web1. It seemed cool at the time, but just had to go. Yeah, Ian, look, I think there's a lot of good use cases for NFTs. So I think there's really good use cases for NFTs in terms of a digital ID. I think there's really good uses of NFTs in terms of ownership of digital items, such as in-game assets, right? So say if I started my video game, uh, a video game collection, and then you could actually trade assets via NFTs via those in-game collectibles. I think those are all really good use cases of NFTs. I think using um, I think using NFTs to securitize stocks is really cool. I think using NFTs to securitize ownership in certain clubs is really cool. But if it's just a picture, right? I just, you know, I just don't see it. Um, it seems to me more of a money grab than anything else. Hey, can you convince the next sucker to pay more for this copycat of this piece of art that everyone has on every chain? It, it, it's that kind of stuff that I don't think is going to have longer term utility. And I also think there's some sketchy stuff in how they market them and as well. I think a lot of times there's front running on the exchanges. I think a lot of times they fake volume. So look, that's just, just my own personal thoughts. Um, I'm not anti-NFT. I'm not even anti-art NFT. I just think um, the idea that a lot of these things are really important to crypto over the long run isn't necessarily true. I think there's going to be much more important things built in crypto than art collections. Uh, DXY104. Wow, that's wild. What time is the AMM going live? I'm not exactly sure, but um, I can actually look it up real quick. But I'm sure I'm sure someone can drop it in the chat. Does anyone know what time the AMM goes live tomorrow? Uh, Nicholas asks if it's 4 p.m. What's going on with the SEC and ETH? A lot of rumors that the SEC is going out, going after ETH. Um, we need to see for sure whether or not that happens. I would not be surprised if the SEC goes after Ethereum or specifically staking. I think the SEC very well could go after Ethereum and staking. And look, that would if the SEC could win on a staking charge, that that makes Ethereum a security, that would be a huge loss for Ethereum going forward and the entire industry of staked cryptocurrencies. Mikkel, do you get Ever for holding XRP? That airdrop should have already happened. So if you didn't get Evernode for holding your XRP on Uphold, um, that would have to be something you sorted out with Uphold, but it should have already been in there. AMM goes live uh, 2010 UTC. Uh, I don't have that conversion in my head at the moment. 
So hopefully, uh, Nicholas, you can make do with the UTC time. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what time that is. Uh, what time Eastern? <laughs> uh, Nick, Nicholas, you could probably do a quick Google search on that. Thoughts on Equilibrium Games? That looks really cool. Uh, Equilibrium Games looks really cool. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier in terms of um, useful NFTs, right? Like the idea that you could buy Equilibrium's games, NFTs, and then sell them to other people in the ecosystem that might want to upgrade their weapon set, upgrade their character. That's a really cool use case for NFTs. That's something I can get behind. But if it's just the same CryptoPunk that was already a thing on Ethereum and then just being recreated on the XRP ledger, same exact pump, punk looks exactly the same. Look, that's it's not something that excites me. Like I'm just going to be brutally honest. X Vector's best. Yeah, X Vector's doing some really cool stuff. I'm curious how their metaverse is gonna um, play out in terms of what's gonna drive users there, but I'm excited to see it. SHX down 20 plus percent. Uh, Murdoch, I can't tell if that's, SHX is up 20% or down 20%. I'm gonna go based on the emoji here and say it's down 20%. Let me take a quick look. Um, Yeah, it looks like it's having a nice little bottoming out phase. Um, look, uh, I don't really understand SHX that well. I looked into it a long time ago. I think I have a small bag somewhere. I'm not a huge fan of uh, of the project, but I know a lot of people are really into it. So, look, maybe I'm wrong on that one. Uh, why did the Fury token crash? Uh the Fury token is a very, very small market cap project, so it's going to be very volatile. If they're successful over the long term, I think they're going to do really well. But for those just micro cap tokens, you just have to understand that they're going to be very volatile in the short term. Um, over the long term, right, you're kind of betting on the video game being successful and them getting that adoption. But yeah, it's just going to be a volatile ride, I think. Steven Naroff did a whole thing on the SEC and ETH and what Gensler's real motive is for going after them on X. Oh, very interesting. I did not see that. Um, I'll have to take a look at that. Um, sometimes it's hard to keep track of all the different stuff going. Tether lost his peg? Strong Mountain, Strong Mountain, Strong Mountain. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What do you mean Tether lost his peg? Let me take a look. Let me take a look. Uh, yeah, very minorly. Um, it's still within their normal bounds as I see it. Daniel, Daniel, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I, I really appreciate that so much, Daniel. Guys, let's try to get it to 300 likes. Daniel dropped the absolute alpha in the chat. He said, let's go. 300 likes for Mickle for spending his time doing this with us. Uh, look, Daniel, this has slowly become one of the favorite parts of every one of my days. So uh, I'm just, I'm really appreciative to be able to get on here and talk with all you guys and be able to analyze these markets together and really just come together, Cray, in such a crazy time. Uh, I really do think of us as kind of the, uh, the, uh, the, the people who kind of figured this out before everyone else, right? The, uh, the pioneers of probably one of the most important uh, changes to our financial system we're ever going to see in our lives. So it's really cool to be able to come out here every single day and kind of talk with you guys. Um, I think one day things are going to change a lot um, for the better. I think it's going to turn into very hypey in the XRP community. I think you're going to have a lot of people rushing in late. I think a lot of the big influencers are going to get on XRP and it's going to kind of kill this like really, really tight knit community uh, that we've created over the past couple of years. But that's why I'm so happy I kind of did this now because I got to know all you guys. I know you guys are all the OGs. You guys will always be the OGs of this channel. You'll always be such a tight part of this community. So look, despite the fact that I think in the next couple of years, things are gonna get really, really hypey and we're gonna see a lot of new people rushing in. Uh, I'm really glad I got to do these live streams now because now I know all of you guys. I know who the people who were here since day one. 
And uh, yeah, so thank you, thank you, thank you guys for supporting me. Um, it, it's just cool to be here with uh, such a large group of people who all figured this stuff out so early. Thank you so much, William. Thank you, thank you, thank you, William. Yeah, William is William and Daniel and Raimundo. All three of those guys are OGs to the channel. Um, uh, I really appreciate all the support you guys give me. And, uh, you know, one day I I'm really excited to be able to do this full time with you guys. And, you know, just really make this my full time priority because this is by far uh, my favorite part of what I get to do every single day. And uh, it's always a shame when I have to cut it short to go take care of my actual job. But uh, you guys are absolutely incredible and I really appreciate the support. It's so cool that I was able to build so many friends. Uh, we were able to make so many friends kind of on this journey. And you just know there's such bigger things around the corner for us. So uh, thank you so much to all of you. Scott, I'm new to XRP and... Your good self, great vibe I get from you. Look, it's awesome having you, man. Uh, I think the XRP community is always excited to onboard new people. It's funny, it's one of the largest cryptocurrencies out there, but it doesn't seem like anyone really understands what's really being built here. Uh, it's super, super nice to have you here, Scott, and would love to have you more often. Jill, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jill. Thank you, Jill. Uh, I say this all the time, but I always get super excited when I see people uh, have their first ever super like uh, on my live stream. Uh, I, I think it's always really cool because I, I feel like, you know, I, I'm providing enough value for you to actually go do your first super like. So thank you so much, Jill. Um, I really appreciate that. And your guys' support really, really does mean the world. Um, you know, I don't take this the wrong way, but sometimes, you know, on a really long day where I've been stuck at the office since like six in the morning, uh, sometimes it's hard to say, all right, now I have to go out and put on like a smile on my face and go grind a live stream. But it's your guys' support and your guys' encouragement that really like gets me out there every single day and gets me excited to do it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Any questions in the chat? Halls balls. You, you guys are just halls balls. Thank you, thank you, thank you, halls. Uh, I, I really appreciate that, man. Uh, look, you, you guys are absolutely incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank I can't say thank you enough to you guys. Halls, Balls, Jill, William Whitmore, Daniel, Raimundo. Uh, thank you guys all so, so much. Uh, your, your support means the world to me. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just so happy you guys get so much value out of this. So uh, I, I, I really appreciate it. Love you too, Halls, Balls. Let's see what else we got. <laughs> Terry, that's awesome, man. Yeah, no, look, I'm really I'm really happy I was able to help out, Terry. Look, I, I think there's look, there's a lot of really great personalities in the XRP community, but I just wanted to add something a little different. And uh, I think a lot of people focus on the technicals, whatever. But uh, I, I'm just super happy I was able to drive so much value to you. Brian Rogers, thank you, man. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Ian says, do you know if anyone is creating an app for the AMM? Ian, there's a lot of great apps being created for the AMM right now. Um, one of the best ones is being made by a guy named Panos on X or on Twitter. Um, if you check out my feed, I think I've retweeted quite a bit of his stuff. If not, I know if you go to my replies on Twitter, there's definitely a post from me today under one of his posts. So make sure to go check that out. Um, Panos is creating a really great application for the automated market maker that looks like it's going to be really easy to use. So um, super exciting stuff. And it's we're, I'm seeing a lot more development on the XRP ledger than I've ever seen in the past. And what Panos is building, right, is what I like to think of as like a real project, right? Look, Panos is building an application to access the automated market maker, but he's just doing it, in my opinion, in the right way. Like, he doesn't have a coin going alongside of it. There's no pointless coin. There's no, like, ICO. There's no pumping. There's no memes with it. He's just building a great interface to access the automated market maker. Look, projects reach out to me all the time and say, hey, Mikkel, like, do you want to work together? Blah, 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 blah. Like, here's our coin. 
And I just look at their project. I'm like, what the heck is the coin for? Like, what is the point in the coin? So uh, I'm always a fan of a project building something, uh, building something really cool and understanding that you don't necessarily need to quit. Linda, Linda, don't you worry about it. Thank you so much. Look, guys, um, people on this stream are extremely, extremely de generous. But look, I, I, I appreciate absolutely anything. Linda, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Darren, <laughs> Darren Naples, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Linda, yeah, Linda, I, I appreciate you being on the streams all the time. You ask great questions. Thank you for being here. Daniel Naples, thank you. First super like on a live stream. Always love seeing that. And Rosa Lee, <laughs> thank you from Canada. Um, I visited Canada once. It's a great place. Rosa, thank you. I, 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 Guys, your support is absolutely blowing me away. So thank you so much for all you guys do for the channel. Um, it's because of you guys that I get to come out here every single day. I get to talk with you guys. I get to answer your questions. So I, I really do appreciate so much how much you guys give back. Um, you really do make this my favorite part of my day every single day. And it's just getting to interact with you guys, to help you guys, to answer your questions. It's always so much fun. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> woo woo from Canada too. A lot of Canadian XRP holders. A lot of Canadian XRP holders. Chadwick, thank you, thank you, thank you. First super like on a live stream. There's been a lot of those today. There's been a lot of those. Those always get me so excited, man. Those always get me so excited. Um, just to know I'm driving enough value for you guys. I'm driving enough value. Look, we're going we're gonna to run through it real quick. Massive thank you to Raymundo, Daniel, William Whitmore, um, Jill. One of Jill's first donations I've seen. Hall's Balls. Always appreciate seeing Hall's Balls on the channel. channel. Linda. Great to see you, Linda. Darren, Darren, thank you. And you too, Rosa. And I think there was one more at the end there. So we'll get that one. And someone someone donated earlier too, but some of the donations disappeared. Chadwick, and there was one other. Sorry, guys. It's getting tough to keep track. Brian Rogers. Brian Rogers. All right. I'm glad we got through all of them. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Uh, <laughs> oh. It's getting hairy. It's getting hairy for Ethereum, like your chest. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. No, things are not looking too good for Ethereum. Look, I I, I want to go on a quick Ethereum rant. It's really about the consensus model. If the SEC wins on this um, staking as a security, it's going to be a big issue for the entire industry. I don't want XRP to win because of regulatory capture. I don't want XRP to win because the SEC is cracking down on these other chains. But if that's the way it goes, that's the way it goes. Uh, Murdoch. Thank you so much, Murdoch. Uh, Murdoch, you're an OG, man. You know how much I appreciate you being on the streams. Uh, thank you, Murdoch. And Murdoch, the best part about your donations is I never have any idea how much money it is because I don't know the conversion. So I always see a number pop up on the screen. But Murdoch, I, I really appreciate it, Murdoch. And uh, you're my number one Indian. Uh, you're my number one Indian viewer. So always appreciate your insights there. You're always dropping great alpha for everyone here in terms of what's going on in India. So uh, Murdoch, thank you, thank you, thank you. All we wanted was a level playing field. Yeah, exactly. Look, look, that's the thing. Like a lot of XRP holders want the SEC to go after Ethereum. I'm not really in that boat. Look, guys, I understand that over the long term, XRP is going to win out because it has the best tech. I just think XRP was designed the best. It's going from a top down approach, right? It's starting with the big institutions and then moving down. It's not looking to get retail adoption and having retail give all their value to the banks like that was never going to work so look it's at the end of the day it's to me it doesn't need to be ethereum is held back by the sec for xrp to succeed i think xrp is gonna win massively regardless of what happens with ethereum in the sec but i will say that if the sec is cracking down on ethereum and if they win and proof of stake is a security i mean that's going to make the xrp ledger the one-stop shop for institutions right that's going to give the XRP ledger a massive advantage. So, um, look, it's something to keep in mind. Smart contracts on XLM. Yeah, no, XLM is definitely making some strides. I'm not a huge fan of XLM, 
but uh, I know a lot of people are. Um, I don't have anything against LM, XLM. I just think the community is so much bigger in the XRP community. So um, XLM, uh, still a good project. They still got good things going on there. Um, I just tend to focus more on the XRP side of things. XRP, XLM, XDC. Messi, I don't think that's a combination you can go too wrong with. That's a, that's a high power combination. Silver Days says to make sure to like and subscribe. Silver Days, man, I always appreciate that. I really do. Um, guys, we, we're almost at 300 likes on the stream right now. Um, let's get over that 300 hurdle, right? Why not? Let's get over that 300 hurdle. Uh upper right hand corner drop a like sold some ai tokens on erc20 oh my look dude i haven't used an erc20 in a while and i went to go use an erc20 and move it around and it's actually like insane that people actually use that shit like it's wild like you lose half your money just trying to transfer the tokens it's absolutely absurd there we go over 300 thank you silver days xrp xlm xdc flare um, the best part about it is a lot of that's going to be interoperable in the future and you're going to be able to really bounce between all these different applications to take advantage of the best parts of each one. Super exciting stuff. And guys, I was also watching an interview the other day of the head of institutional DeFi at Ripple talking about what Ripple's plans were for institutional grade DeFi and it's really, really exciting stuff. Man, I watched that interview and it just let me know we are so, 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 so early. Like, I know some people don't like to hear that, but it is insane how early we are to what's being built. It is so, so early in terms of what is actually being created in these new new financial system protocols. So, once the value of XRP skyrockets, will there be a place we can borrow against it? Johnny K, that is a great, great question. And yes, that's what's being built right now. Look, um, you're going to be able to, one, use that value on the Flare network. That will be a way of sort of borrowing around it. You'll be able to use it in an automated market maker to generate yield. That will be a way of kind of borrowing against it. There's also likely going to be staking and things like that on the EVM sidechain, which will be a more direct form of borrowing against it. Look, there's a lot of DeFi capabilities coming to the XRP ledger. And what I'm most excited about that is the fact that it's going to make it so people don't have to sell their XRP, right? Here's the thing. Right now, most people's exit strategy is just to sell their XRP when it gets to a certain price. But what you do by doing that is you remove your leverage in the network. By selling your XRP, you're removing your leverage from the network. If you retain your XRP and can utilize that XRP, you can actually use the value of your XRP to generate income that will probably far exceed what you get from taking profits. Take a look at what the wealthiest people on earth do. When they need to buy something, right? When they want to make a big purchase, if they want to move money around, they actually don't actually sell their assets. What they do is they actually margin their assets, use their assets to create leverage, and then use that leverage to make a purchase without actually selling the asset. That way, one, they don't create a taxable offense, but also it allows them to retain ownership in an asset that they likely don't want to liquidate. So there's going to be a lot of things you're going to be able to do with your XRP to help make sure you don't have to lose your access to the asset and still be able to generate yield. It's going to be really, really cool. And that doesn't mean, right, you can't take some profits, right? No one's saying that. I'm just saying there's likely going to be things in the future coming to the XRP ledger that will encourage you to actually retain a large portion of your XRP and use it rather than just selling it. <sighs> oh, Dan C, is that true? Is that true? Native lending and borrowing is being built out as we speak as another amendment for the XRP ledger. That would be really exciting. If there was native lending and borrowing, that would be very, very, very cool. That would be very cool. XRP will run out. Banks will want it. A plan of loaning mine to a bank. Yeah, no, literally, you're going to be able to loan your XRP to big institutions. I fully think that's very much in the future and very much in the cards. I think institutions are going to need a lot of XRP that retail sucked up off the market. Guys, you know what's crazy? 
Uphold alone has 5 billion XRP being held by retail. Eventually, the institutions are going to have to get their XRP somewhere, and they're going to be knocking on your door for it. It looks like there's some debate on the lending, lending and borrowing stuff. Um... Oh, very interesting. It got announced at a dev conference. Yeah, guys, uh, we'll see what happens with that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's something being worked on. And it can certainly be done on the EVM sidechain. So um, that's the great thing about the XRP ledger that I think a lot of people don't appreciate. This is the great thing about blockchains in general, right? Don't do leverage with margin against your crypto like a normal stock account. Galicio, yeah, that's that's a great point, right? You have to be very careful when you're doing any kind of leverage. Um, anything in crypto, you want to be 10 times more conservative, but there are still ways you're going to be able to use your assets. <laughs> Daniel, I love that. Daniel says, dude, they're going to have to tr pry my XRP out of my cold, dead hands. Oh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. When asked about giving Eat the free pass by Patrick McHenry, Gary Gensler wanted to be clear his predecessor was the one that makes that call. He wants to win before he leaves. He knows he'll get it. Yeah, that's a good point. Look, one of the things that people don't really understand is Gary Gensler had nothing to do with the Ripple SEC case, really. I know he's been at the SEC during it, but he didn't start the Ripple SEC case. Imagine if Gary Gensler was the one who ended up settling with Ripple and then launching an investigation into Ethereum. Guys, I think if people would be really looking at those old videos of Gary Gensler calling XRP a bridge currency a lot differently after that. Now, I'm skeptical of something like that happening because Ripple has been on the offensive, essentially dragging Gary Gensler's name through the mud and through the dirt. So I don't think there's any kind of secret thing going on there, but it, it is interesting, man. Gary Gensler clearly is going after ETH. <laughs> when Lambo, need for speed, says when Lambo. Uh, hopefully soon, man. Uh, it's not going to be a Lambo for me, though. Uh, I don't know what's... I need a new car desperately. This car um, is not in good shape at all. Um... But I don't think it's good. It's certainly not going to be a Lambo for me. Maybe a Tesla. I think a Tesla would be the top of my list. Not a Cybertruck either. Maybe like a nice white Model 3. I don't need anything crazy, right? I, I, I just want something that gets me from point A to point B. Why hasn't he settled yet? Look, I don't think Gary Gensler... I don't think Ripple's wanted to settle. I don't think Ripple's wanted to settle. And I think this is where most people get it wrong. I think the SEC would settle the Ripple SEC case. The SEC has settled countless cases with different cryptocurrency firms. They've been getting embarrassed by Ripple. I think Ripple right now is just perfectly happy kicking the SEC's butt publicly. I think Ripple is perfectly happy kind of going down as a hero for the industry taking on the SEC. I think Ripple knows that the SEC never had a case against them. So, look, I wonder if Ripple so far has just had been telling the SEC, look, we have no interest in settling. Um, you shouldn't have done this. Now you have to fight to get out of it. So I think the SEC, I think Ripple's just dragging the SEC through the mud right now. We'll see, right? We'll see. We know the SEC offered Ripple settlements before in the past. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Ripple is just kind of saying, hey, look, you shouldn't have done this. Now you're going to learn the lesson. Okay, I'm getting a cyber truck for sure. Oh, lots of people saying they want the cyber truck. Lots of people saying they want the cyber truck. Ripple will be a bank. Ripple will act as a bank, yes. Crypto Clay, the only reason why I don't like saying Ripple would be a bank is because I hate banks. I think banks are uninnovative. I think Ripple is going to be a new aged bank, right? A crypto sort of bank, right? That's kind of what they do. That's kind of what they do. Ian says, if Ripple goes right to the end and all charges are dismissed, do Ripple have any way 
to claw back the hundred million they have spent on lawyer? Nope. Ian, that's the best part about fighting the SEC. Fighting the SEC is all pro bono. You don't get any money back. You don't get any money back. Now, 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 now. Look, um, that is not necessarily true. Actually, let me take, let me run that back real quick. Ripple will not get their lawyer piece fees paid for because technically Ripple did violate securities laws according to the judge. Ripple should have registered some of their sales of XRP. Because of that, I don't think Ripple's going to get any of their charges paid for by the SEC. I don't think it matters for Ripple, right? Ripple clearly has more than enough money to fight this case and do a lot of other things on the side because they're buying companies left and right. So I don't think it's really a big deal for Ripple in terms of the money. I think for Ripple, it's more of a principal thing. Technically, the SEC could have to pay Ripple's lawyer legal fees in some crazy scenario. I know in the debt box case that the SEC is currently getting embarrassed in, right? The SEC was just forced to pay debt boxes legal fees because the SEC was caught lying to the court. They were sanctioned. They were punished. Part of their punishment was they had to pay debt boxes legal fees. So I think there is technically a possibility where if something crazy happened, the SEC could have to pay Ripple's legal fees. But according to most experts, that is highly unrealistic. I would say ultimately, out despite the fact that out of principle, that would be awesome to see. I don't think it really matters, right? Ripple doesn't need the money. Um, Ripple has plenty of money without that. So um, I would love to see the SEC punished and have to pay it. But my base case here, right, is that that's probably not going to happen. Um, do you think they're partially banking on XRP's price surge to offset legal fees? No, they have plenty of money regardless. Look, Ripple has billions of dollars on their balance sheet in cash. Um, Ripple has plenty of money outside of XRP making any kind of move. I will say if XRP makes a move to $10, Ripple's going to be one of the most important companies on planet Earth, one of the most powerful companies on planet Earth. So look, I don't think people realize how big Ripple is. I don't think people realize how important Ripple is. No, need for speed. They absolutely do not need to burn the escrow. No, no, no burning the escrow. Absolutely no burning the escrow. Uh, Ripple's escrow makes Ripple a powerhouse. It's going to make them one of the most powerful companies in the world. It's going to make Ripple one of the biggest IPOs in U.S. history. It's going to make Ripple have the money to fight off anyone who tries to sue them again. It's going to make it so Ripple can incentivize projects building on the XRP ledger. It's going to make it so Ripple can help pre-fund different payment channels when they work with big institutions. The, the escrow is a strategic weapon for Ripple. If it wasn't for the escrow, Ripple might not have been able to defend themselves against the SEC. If it wasn't for the escrow, XRP might have been a security. So look, Ripple is using the escrow to defend the XRP ledger. Ripple is using the escrow to make the XRP ledger more powerful. I do not think there is any scenario in which burning the escrow is a good idea. No, absolutely no burn. Look, what Ripple's going to be able to do with the, with the escrow is put it into the AMFs, right? Ripple's going to be able to use the escrow to put liquidity on chain. Their XRP put it to use and help bolster the ecosystem. Ripple's going to have a lot of huge use cases for the XRP ledger that doesn't need to be burned, right? They could use the XRP escrow as rewards. They can use it to incentivize institutions. They can use it to pre-fund different channels. Like, there's a lot of very, very cool things that Ripple could do with the XRP ledger. I mean, with the XRP escrow. That is billions of dollars. You do not burn billions of dollars. You use billions of dollars. Billions of dollars are for leverage. Billions of dollars are for building networks. Billions of dollars are for making ecosystems flourish. It's not for burning. Keep the escrow, but quit releasing it to find new hiring. Make the institutions and developers buy XRP and exchanges. Look, I, I'm down to debate whether or not Ripple takes certain practices with their escrow. Uh, need for Speed. Man, that is one of the best comments I've seen, Need for Speed. Um, it, the fact that, right, you know, I could go on a little rant about your comment, right, and you just take it away as like, hey, that's your perspective, um, and you look at it as picking my brain to learn new stuff. Man, that's the kind of stuff that really gets me excited. Um, I, I hate when people take, like, 
me giving my opinion as some kind of kind of an attack on their view or take it the wrong way. Uh, the fact that that's how you took that is absolutely incredible. And that's that's a really good response right there. Really mature and, and just shows that you're here to learn, right? Not here to kind of prove a point. That's my own personal thesis. Um, XLM burned 50% of their supply. Uh, Kroll, some The guy whose name starts with a K, Crow, Crawl Bro, Crawl Bro, says that XLM burned 50% of their supply. Nothing happened. Yeah, exactly, right? Imagine this. Ripple burns all their escrow and then nothing happens to XRP and we're all just sitting there and saying, all right, well, now the most important person on the XRP ledger is poor. That's not what we want, right? We want Ripple to be a powerhouse. We want Ripple to be one of the most powerful institutions on earth. We want Ripple to have the money to buy people like Swift. We want Ripple to have the money to buy people like Bank of America. Complete takeover of the financial system. Ripple's gonna need hundreds of billions of dollars to do that. That's what the escrow is gonna be used for. And it's only gonna drive more value for XRP. Crypto Clay says, that's why Big BG rolls with the armed guards. Love the armed guards. Uh... I would like to make a big contribution to you, Miracle. <laughs> Ian, thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Look, man, just having you here every single day and being able to hang out with you uh, is so awesome. And look, Ian, uh, I really appreciate your support. Uh, you're an OG, and uh, maybe one day we can go get a beer and have a good time. And uh, that's really all I'm looking for. Um, look, man, uh, I can't read your name. Uh, bro, you really make us motivated holding XRP. Look, that's what I'm here to do. I don't want people to get shaken out. I want people to know what they hold. I don't want people... <laughs> Daniel, absolutely. Absolutely. Look, I don't want people to get shaken out by FUD. I don't want people to lose sight of what's being built. What I really see myself as, as a, is a way to help communicate to you guys, right? that a lot of what we're seeing in the market doesn't reflect reality. The XRP ledger has never looked stronger. The XRP ledger has never been more important in the world. The XRP ledger has never been gaining the adoption it has at this kind of pace. Guys, things have never looked better. The price and fundamentals are going to reflect that. It's only a matter of time. Guys, I gotta run. Thank you so much for coming. A massive thank you to everyone who donated today. You guys absolutely blew it out of the water. I appreciate it so much. Uh, this is very quickly, like I've said a million times on the stream, become my favorite part of my day. I cannot wait until I can do this full time. Guys, thank you so much. I hope everyone has a great day. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon. And for now, Nickel out.